Hello, everyone. I'm Jesus, and welcome to the next episode of The Road to Old School MTG. In this video, I want to do a wrap-up of several things. First of all, a wrap-up of some of the cards that I've purchased, some of the cards that I've won through participation in two events. One was just yesterday. And also uh, discussing some of the cards that are in transit, which are nothing big so but i want to just have that information in this video so you guys know the full rundown of you know the things that i'm getting in and out okay so first of all just dis discussing the two events that i've recently attended so at the end of april 2024 i attended the hydra tilt event hosted by the uh, hartford hydras and to this side here are the cards that I got at that event. I ended up making top eight. So this one is uh, so uh, Flower Stone. So here's their logo, little Hydra, I guess. A little hard to tell what it is. So top eight, and then also another one, Spike Top Eight, I guess. That was dependent on the deck type of deck you brought. And I'll show you the deck list I want uh, for that one. Then this is the participation card given out to everyone. And this is just uh, my first opponent made these to give out to every one of his opponents that he faced. And I ended up using this one as the card that I asked every one of my opponents to sign for me, right? So pretty cool um, gift here. So I included it in the cards that I got. Also in the background here, this playmat is from the 2018, so it's a little hard to tell here, but 2018 Lobster Con. That's, if I'm not mistaken, that's the very first Lobster Con. So this is pretty cool. I won this at the raffle in the Hydro Tilt event. So pretty happy about this. I also won a t-shirt of the Hartford Hydras in, at, in the raffles there, right? So pretty happy with that. So let me show the deck, I guess, uh, since... I'm already discussing this. All right, so this is the deck that I used for that event. So this is a robots deck. There were a couple cards that are that were loaned to me. So let's see if I can. First of all, the control magics were loaned to me. Not because I don't have any, but I went with other cards. But then last minute, I decided to change it up. So then uh, I got a, an Airbnb and with some of the uh, some other uh, friends from the Sisters of the Flame. And they were able to, one of the players there were, was able to lend me those two cards, which ended up being crucial in the, in the mirror match, or at least somewhat mirror match. So I faced off against another robot stack but actually a, a shops deck, right? So they use workshops to bring out their cards. Other workshops, you know, it's very similar decks. My deck is different in that I don't have any workshops because I can't afford any. <laughs> um, I would put at least one though. So I'm sure one of my friends could let me one for next time because I do want to continue on with this deck. And I have continued on with this deck like, like I will show you soon. Um, but... Uh, let's see, yeah, the the difference between this version and a traditional shops version is, of course, they have four workshops. They lean into that workshop and just able to cast not just big creatures like the Suchis, the Juggernauts, tracks, you know, cast them real quick. They can easily cast the turn one. If they get a workshop of Mox, they can cast the turn one Suchi, turn one Juggernaut. Or just easily do, do a turn two as well uh, for a trike. But they also have a lot of additional artifacts, so which I do not. I just they are actually actually now that I look at my deck list, I do have a bit more artifacts, of course. But they have even more. So they will also a lot of times will have icy manipulators. I've seen that uh, relic relic barriers. They'll have a few main deck. So you know just additional things uh, of that nature. Me for this particular build, like you're seeing, I I have ramp, of course the. All five moxes. I have no 
Black Lotus, so I don't have to include that card here. But uh, three Mana Vaults, three Power Stones, uh, two Tomes, a Soul Ring you see there, uh, Chaos Orb, of course, in addition to the creatures. Four switches, four juggernauts, three tricks. So uh, with this deck, I ended up making top eight right at number eight. So very happy with that result for myself. Uh, let's see. So in terms of what I, what cards I was lent, I think that's, is that the only card? Uh, oh no, the Volcanic Islands. Those two Volcanic Islands, I do not own any. So those two were lent to me. But everything else are my own cards. And like I said, the Control Magics I do own. I just didn't have it for this event. And I was lucky enough, one of my friends that was in the Airbnb had two available. But this was the deck that I took for that. So I'm pretty um, happy with that. So now going back to this. So that's over here. Here is a mix of cards I've purchased. And I'm also going to now discuss the cards that are incoming. I literally bought a few just today, right before this video. Uh, just a couple odds and ends. So first here, I got four Goblin Heroes only because, uh, because of the cards here. I participated in the Goblin Cup tournaments. That was yesterday, which was uh, May 18. So I'll talk about this, that later and then the cards that I got here from that event. But I just you know, just randomly decided to get four Goblin Heroes because I don't have any full art. I got four Remove Enchantments uh, because uh, a couple of different ideas that I want to do with it. Mainly a Stasis deck, maybe. Uh, these two up here, I've, I've got an extra Basalt Monolith just to finish the playset. And then I got a City of Brass, but I'm I'm a moron and I ordered the wrong one, which is, of course, wrong art. But there is a pre-modern event coming up. So I'll just end up putting this in the prize pool for, from my card donation. So it won't go to waste. Here, during the um, Goblin Hero Cup event, I, in Time Warp, there were these two cards available for sale, and then I bought them immediately. So, Copy Artifact, this finishes my playset. I got it for $30. Uh, heavy Plate, which is just fine. <laughs> and then a nice Light Plate, Unlimited Juggernaut for $10. This is just a, an impulse buy. I don't need it. But it looks pretty cool. And I am using Juggernauts a bit more and more. And like I said, I do intend to continue with this deck. The... Robot stack, and I also want to make an X points version of this. There will be an X points tournament as well in time we're coming up, so I may just end up doing the X points version of the, sh the robot stack. So I already have the full copy artifact playset, I have the full basalt monolith playset, and um, I'm still need one more mana bolt, but I may end up not doing four anyway. So I'm still deciding. But either way, just because of my OCD, I do want to get in, eventually get my fourth mana vault. They're just expensive. And I have since I have no rush, I'll wait until I see some random mana vault at a good price. Or until I do end up deciding that I do need that fourth one. All right, so now discussing the next event, which I was in yesterday. That was the Goblin Hero Cup, hosted at Time Warp. So this is the participation card. Of course, a nice Goblin Hero. I forgot to ask my opponents to sign it. But I, I was one of the helpers, uh, the people that set up the tournament. I was not the main person who set it up, though. That's uh, Jonathan L. So props to him. Excellent event. This is the card I ended up picking from the prize pool. Beta Frozen Shades are pretty cool. So this is all tatted up. So that's cool. This is the card I ended up winning. And from the actual event in terms of my placement. 
since I'm recording my matches, most of my matches, and then I recorded the uh, the following rounds, the quarter, uh, the semifinals, and then the finals. Uh, so I recorded all those. This is the card I got from that tournament in terms of my placement. So um, after I post all the videos, I'll show you that card. And then, of course, this beauty over here. A collector's edition plateau. Actually, let me double check if it's a collector's edition or collector's edition. Yep, collector's edition. Plateau, this is from one of the raffles. So once again, I won a raffle. This is actually the card that was donated by some of us in uh, the Time Warp group and I actually put in a bit for this card. And then with the money that I put in for the raffle, I still got a deal out of it, right? So basically, I got it for $100. Uh, so this is a heavy play, definitely. Either moderate play or heavy play, depending. I already put in the sleeves. Uh, but I'm happy with it. I don't have any. So now, uh, so this is great. And I was already considering going collect this edition for the second half of my uh, dual land uh, play sets that I want. So I have, I almost have halfway, I'm almost halfway into the revised dual lands. So I have four tundras, four savannas, four tropical islands, that's 12, three underground rivers, 15, and two uh, scrublands, 17. So I need three more to finish off that playset, and I, all those are in revised. So I need two more scrublands and one more underground seed to finish the full playset. But then the other half I haven't even touched because I wanted to finish the first half. And then I also wanted to decide if I ended up doing a, I guess let me take it out to really appreciate it. I wanted to decide if I was going to go match the rest of the cards, dual lane cards, and go revise for the second half. Or if I decided to either, I've been looking into foreign edition dual lands, or of course, collector's edition, or N collector's edition international. W with me getting this card here, I may just, that may just seal it for me in terms of just me deciding to do collector's edition for the second half, which honestly, that was the main option I was leaning towards anyway. Because just realistically speaking, it would just take way, it would be double, at least double, maybe probably more than double the price that I could get for, no, well, maybe double, yeah, I guess maybe double, maybe a little more, a little less, but there's definitely a, a significant price difference between Collector's Edition and Revised. And that's one of the things I mentioned in my two-year anniversary video where I was just afraid of get, investing too much in collector's edition. I only did it for the really, really high-end cards, like, of course, my do, my Moxes, uh, basically the Power Nine stuff, my Chaos Orb. But anything else I wanted to do revised just because I was afraid be, that certain formats would not be receptive and accepting of collector's edition for at least formats for old school. But I was totally wrong on that. Collector's edition is completely accepted. Uh, let's say there were, if you were to go to some Wishes of the Coast hosted tournaments, then that would be an issue with collector's edition. In the now almost three years that I've been in old school, I have not once attended any Wizards of the Coast sponsored event or any Wizards of the Coast adjacent events. So just organ uh, organized by 
the community, old school community. Those are the only ones I've attended. Lobster Con, um, Hydro Tilt, uh, the events at Time Warp, all, some other side, uh, other events that I've also attended. Um, so those, in those events, CE is completely accepted. I never had any issues with my CE power being accepted. So because of that reason, there's really no, you know, no negative side effects of me going ha second half of my dual land play sets being collector's edition or collector's edition international. So that I'm very much likely going in this route for the second half of my dual land play sets. It's just more affordable, easier. It'll be, I'll be able to more re realistically have the second half completed, especially on uh, the volcanic islands. That second half, the volcanic islands are very expensive. That's probably the most expensive dual land, either that or underground seas. And it's a, at least a 50% difference, maybe even more from CE to revise. So in anticipation of that, you know, just this seems like the most economical and fastest way for me to achieve the second half of the dual land play sets. It's a bit of a bummer that it'll be half and half, half revised and half CE, but at least the revised side will be totally revised and the CE side will be totally CE or CEI. Um, but honestly, that's first world problems, right? <laughs> this is pretty dope. So I'm glad that I got this. Of course, who wouldn't be glad to get a dual land <laughs> in a raffle? We had two dual lands in it in the Time War raffle. We also had a Savannah. I already have a place at, of course. But I could definitely use another to add to my sister ten decks. Those, uh, the, I do have Savannahs in them, but those are proxies. Of course, I'm not going to just buy an extra Savannah just to have to have it in my um, sister to index when I already have a place out of them. Some place, some some uh, other place will, of course, <laughs> but not me. I don't have that kind of budget to splurge like that. This is already splurging enough, this hobby as it is, All right? So I just wanted to do this rundown and actually one last thing to really appreciate. Ooh, actually, ooh, before I sign off, I forgot to show the cards that are incoming, right? So. I'll do that in addition to showing uh, some of these, uh, this beautiful play mat, so, which I'm pretty happy with. I put in a good chunk of the, um, of my raffle tickets for the Hydra event. I put it for this. This was the number one thing I wanted from there and I ended up getting it. So I was pretty psyched. Lobster Crown 2018, extremely clean, uh, signed by the artist. I would assume over here on the date of 2018. So very happy with that. Now to finish off the video, uh, nothing big, just a couple of odds and ends are incoming that, like I said, I literally just purchased right before making this video because I figured, all right, let me just knock that out as well. So I got a few, this order here, four Repentant Blacksmiths and Chronicles, four Black Vice, Fourth Ed and one Living Wall. The Living Wall, uh, I will be attending LobsterCon 2024. And Anson Maddox, the artist, is, I believe, is on the list of artists that are coming. He's my favorite artist. So I just wanted to have a, a Living Wall for him to sign. Of course, I'm going to ask him to sign my Serendipity Freaks as well. Whatever else I can think, I want to get a a nice condition Perlu Min Minotaur. For him to sign, or may I might just do a playset for that. So you know, I just in anticipation of that, I just wanted to get um a living wall. I, and this is from Unlimited in light plate, so pretty decent condition. The black vices I'm getting because I have them in uh, my pre-modern deck. Right now, the four black vices that I currently have, I have up them all here. And looking at my pre-modern deck, it's almost fully cards you know, um, outside of the old school pool, card pool. So, of course, for pre modern I can get any edition cards, right? So, like, Black Vice, I could get them in the newer edition as well. 
they have totally different borders, totally different art, but I tend to not do that just because of my aversion to modern magic. So to compromise I and to prevent swapping, I just want to keep these four black vices in there. I bought four fourth edition ones to separate them from my, my four four revised ones that I currently have, just so I can mentally separate the two and for my OCD. And repentant blacksmiths, I've just been always wanting to get them. I just keep freaking forgetting. I got two more basalt monoliths co incoming uh, for my sister to index. I currently swap them in and out, and it's annoying. So I just got two heavy plated ones at three dollars each. Uh, and this is the order that I made recently. So I ended up. Uh, yeah, this order was totally messed up. Uh, okay, the the city of brass was fine. I did get it. This was fine. The basalt monolith. First of all, I ordered two at this price, which is great for a near mint. Look, I played three dollars for for two heavy plate at three dollars each. So this was basically the same price at near mint. But uh, as you see, uh, one of my it was refunded because he didn't have two. He only had one. So I only got the one, and it was a heavy plate. And not a near mint. So. So they. Yeah, look at this thing. So let me just just for anything else after that. Oh, yeah, the four remove enchantments and the goblin hero. This remove enchantments one dollar each. Goblin hero 39 cents each. But this is the. The salt mana that I got from that player. Where I got the city of brass. That's perfectly fine. That was a fine order. This is supposed to be near mint. This is heavy played. Heavy, heavy, heavy played. <laughs> so, and the front is really jacked up as well. It's just not visible through this webcam. It may look nice here, maybe with the angle. So I just wanted to show this. It's, uh, it was really annoying. Um, to get an order so wrong. Uh, but whatever, that's that's part of what you're signed up for in old school. And, and just magic, I guess, in general. Like I said, I don't order new stuff. I would think the new stuff, you're more likely to get better condition stuff, you know, as you place them, you know, as the depending on the order that you place. I would think this is more likely to happen with older condition older cards since you know, they are of course older and there's less of them available but whatever so i just wanted to do that final rundown and then end it with this beautiful playmat thank you guys for watching